welcome to the glaze studio this is going to be the series of tutorials that will focus and prepare you the best for a professional oil painting doesn't matter what level you are there are certain basic things that we need to talk about you know before we are getting ready for a uh, oil painting artwork yeah so we are going to discuss all this uh, materials and also references in in this whole structure and today the focus is going to be as a first session on the canvas itself yeah and you might definitely be wondering yeah what is there we buy canvases and if you have tried canvases that have been store bought uh, you might have already noticed that the canvases are in the same sometimes the quality does matter and um, when you are really working hard on it and making some effort to do something it could tear off disappointing you and so on so why is this happening and why are we not so familiar in this area let's attack all these questions in this all i have here um that we are going to use the sessions that, that are coming up with this a part of uh, um this set of tutorials series of tutorials is going to need a medium sized uh, canvas and i have bought um eight canvases they are size 40 by 50 each right here and um i'm going to move this camera to the front so you could see more of the canvas and you will see the shine on the canvas because i haven't even opened it yeah so i'm going to do the opening right in front of you and you will get to see how the texture is different and so on and what is the benefit yeah of having a, a couple of varieties here hmm? yes so i have um i i have bought about eight pieces because the series is going to be large and uh, i will need eight pieces of them but all eight are in the same size 40 by 50 cm so once you are going into a shop to buy a, a canvas what are all the thing that you can check before um you are buying it yeah so i haven't even removed the price tag or anything i have i have not done anything so you can see first of all in this very clearly in both the brands what you see is that it tells you the kind of paint that you can use isn't it that's important isn't it basic it says uh in danish it's written olie acrylic which means oil or acrylic yeah and this is written in english so oil acrylic that is good and what else is um, mentioned here this is saying hand hand stretched so this is being done by hand okay does it matter yeah maybe let's see so and what kind of wood have they used isn't it what kind of wood have they used that's also there and how do you use the wood and so on so these are basic information that you could you know just lift up and check and it's usually written also in some cases the pictures are there in this case you will see that it's all written what kind of material this says that this is a polyester um clothing and it's about a top quality clothing and so on so everything is also written in this so it's either written or in pictorial form that you could check what kind of quality it is yeah and will it sustain because sometimes you might buy something really very cheap on the store but then you figure out that the cloth is not of good quality and you are not getting the kind of output painting over and over and also especially 
when you have a hard hand what's a hard hand somebody that naturally uses hard brush strokes is a hard hand yeah and you could have soft hand so depending upon what time of you know artist you are you might push a little bit more with the material and it could spoil that so this is something that you could check you know to see the quality is good and so on then you look at definitely the sides to see the sizes i chose 40 by 50 for this whole project so i have got those thing those um, pieces here and i'm going to turn it around to see few more things also so it's usually little more information that's given hmm? so um yeah it says here it's all written in danish this one so i'm going to read out the the one here in this so uh, in your hands you hold a product that is the culmination of four generations and 80 years of focus on quality and sustainability we promise you that this stretched canvas will serve your art in the best way possible and live up to your highest expectations all our canvases are hand stretched in denmark on our well renowned uh, renowned stretcher bars made from nordic fsc certified pine wood so you get to know the sourcing hmm? is this important we are artists we are going to paint if the quality is good um should it really matter well think of it from the point of view that you are a professional and you are going to paint this picture whatever picture you are painting and then hand this over to somebody as a you know your buyer you know he will want to know she will want to know that you have a sustainable product made so which means your sourcing is also as sustainable as it is so it does matter isn't it that you are sourcing all the time from a sustainable uh, supplier so that's one thing and even before opening there are few things you can check so you don't need to feel disappointed after coming home and starting with a process and saying oh lord i got something really bad for myself what is it so look at the frame the thickness of the frame that's how thick it is i'm just putting my finger for you to see so that is the thickness of the frame and that is telling me something and the way it is tethered and the way it is cut it's all finely done yeah so these things matter when it comes to being able to work in a in a quality um, painting so both the both the products that i have got both the brands deliver on that level of you know uh, quality so i'm happy with what i buy even before i'm opening yeah so um i i like this that is these are basic things that you could check even at the at the store before even you are buying so once you have bought it now we are going to go into the details of it isn't it so i'm going to open it up right in front of you so you will not see the glare anymore hmm i'm staring this open what do you have here so this packet is having eight pieces yeah that we could use in the back of the pain the artwork isn't it so i'm going to keep that now now let's tear it open before we do that i'm saving this piece i usually like to save this piece also because i note down all the points if i'm going to make an agreement with a customer or something i will need this so i usually like to save the piece of information and open up the cover so i have opened it up this is a nice cloth and there is you know i'm poking it from underneath so you see my you know the tension that i'm yes that sound is also mm, it's tethered very well yeah 
we are going to increase the tension of it by using those eight pieces let's do the same thing here so i'm going to tear it open I'm trying to do it with my own finger mm. you can use fork anything yeah but be very careful so i have removed the unpacking ceremony is also marking the start of your artwork isn't it yes so this is unpacked and i'll have to remove this paper carefully yeah done so i'm taking it with me keeping it with me and i'm removing this packet as well so which has the eight pieces okay so look at the cloth what's the difference you know this is this is a white cloth and you say ah that's less brown yeah what's the difference so when you have a um, a colored cloth like this we we will have one layer less we can have I wouldn't say we will. We can possibly try to have one layer less because I would prefer to watch this with a color before I get started, which I will do um, in one of those uh, one of your sessions. But here, no, this will not need a wash. Why do we need a wash of a color? when you are working on layer by layer there's a possibility that uh, that you are missing something out here and there and then when you're coming close to finish that you see that something is really not sitting right because it's not you know finished in some way or the other so that tension is there at least in my case when i work on all these detail level paintings i don't like to have that white that's one reason another reason is that even though even in this case cannot assume that you can get started right away also <clears throat> because the cloth has to observe some oil as a base so that you are building just like you have to imagine just like having a, a you know uh, the groundwork done in a uh, in a building so you do that groundwork uh, build that uh, base uh from underneath the ground and then you start building the ground floor first floor and so on and you build it's the same logic you know we want to have the first layer done so the layer one is so important the wash is important maybe the way i would do it you know it will slightly differ because of the cloth that i'm using and the colored cloth or non colored cloth or so on but otherwise you know uh, i would also um, suggest that you do that yeah always that's one thing another thing right now is that those pieces that we had picked up what are these pieces should be there you know you should see that even before buying it you should be able to see it what are these pieces huh these are called wedges wooden wedges yeah and these wedges go in look at the way the picture shows how it goes in so you can actually hammer it and push them in the slots you will see the tiny slots on the side that you can push them into um uh, and you can hammer them and in my case um i don't necessarily hammer them i have seen that it goes with my own hand and i am okay with the tension if i need i do use something like a hammer yeah but mostly you know for me i feel that this is enough if i push it in with my own hand like this you see that's how this goes i'm going to do that again on the other side of it and push it in so the moment we are doing eight pieces what is happening to the canvas why do we have to do this it increases the tension so it's a cloth that is mounted on a wooden piece and what you see behind is this empty space so every time you are going to knock on the painting from behind 
painting look at the way uh, cloth is jumping in between yeah so this is because there is this space some sort of space left where the cloth is just going back and forth and you want to stop that from happening how do you do that it's by using these wooden wedges on those slots that is given in the corner yes let's push that nicely gone in this corner two more corners to go and remember to throw away the plastic that is coming out of all this packing in the respective plus bins yes so we are done with the building the tension of the canvas yes so i am doing the last one and it is now i'm checking how it is mm strong enough if it isn't i will definitely use a hammer to hammer it around or hammer or something stronger to just you know make sure that this the tension is built enough yes so now my canvas is ready yeah so you will have to really imagine two things one the working process how are you working how is your hand do you press a lot because some people really go close to the body of the canvas all the time and press a lot so the moment you press a lot the cloth is going to bulge a lot will it sustain yeah and that is one thing putting a wrist your hand on it that is one habit there is no good or bad habit in that you know if you are comfortable putting your hand like this and painting that should that should be the way that you are doing that's fine but does the does the cloth really hold good for that another thing is that when you use a brush how is your stroke you know some people have really like feathery strokes i'm going to do some strokes here just picking up some brush so let's say this is a very feathery light stroke versus look at the sound that's the sound and it is hurting the body of the canvas can it sustain that's the question so this question does it answer that's one thing so while in production while you are working as an artist you must be comfortable placing your hand placing your brush the way you would like to does it fit in that's number one point another point is that how long will it sustain how many layers can it hold on top of it layer 1 2 3 4 5 6 whatever 20 50 whatever you want to do will it sustain will it hold how long is the life of the painting yeah what are you what kind of value are you adding to the customer when you you know ask him or her to pay some money they are paying for this isn't it they are paying for this everything so what kind of value are you giving will it hold for 6 months and go away that's that's a shame you would like to have it or you you want your customers to have it for many many years and enjoy what you did isn't it so keep that in mind so these are the essential points to to keep in mind when we are working on um shopping for the canvas so shopping for the right canvas really is the first step to getting a good painting done yes you're going to be happy working on it you're going to spend some hours working on it isn't it so you must be really really happy working on it and don't feel sorry that you are going to lose the paint the effort just because you accidentally bought a low quality canvas yes um and one more thing about the canvases that you are buying nowadays is that they are mostly primed so they have a primer or some some kind of you know to toning done on the cloth so it's not a raw cloth mostly but if not you know uh, people also do it to be honest it's been a 
long long time since i tried also many many years ago i have bought some non primed material and i have used a primer uh, to to prime the uh, canvas but i truly i have lost touch with that whole habit because the the products nowadays do have priming done that's one important point another thing is that you are also relying on a supplier to do the quality work if you are not having the resources yourself to build your own wood and tether your own canvas which which some of uh, some of the artists also do so they have their own uh, you know um, their art galleries or their uh, workshops have the space and also the uh, they do have the resources needed to do all that if you have such a thing then it is great if not then we are totally relying on some uh, some of the brands here so do ensure that you are buying the right brand investing in the right brand um <clears throat> before you even get started with the work so look at the way right now we have done okay mm yes all right the last piece goes here that yes any excess cloth that is sticking out any piece you want to remove this is also the right time to do it um yeah so just make it tidy and ready for you to use so check that sound it does matter yes so this is about understanding canvases so let's summarize what we have learned we uh, we know how to look for a what to look for in a packet like this so unopened packet like this if i get what to look for what kind of uh, uh, you know material is it made with and how long can it sustain and also is it fit for painting the the kind of paints that i would like to use and so on and uh, all the information that is available that you can research before even buying then when we open how do we use those wedges to build the tension in the back of the canvas how does it matter to us that we buy the right canvas the two points the core points is that while working you should be thoroughly happy working on it the way you want to work number 2 is that you should be able to add value to the end customer or buyer or owner of the painting um by assuring that you have a highly high quality or top quality um sourced item so they can enjoy it for many many years so that was all about understanding canvases let's meet up in the next class to work on this canvas and do a wash on this canvas see you bye bye